then June is also equally as uh, as obstinate when it comes to like questioning Emily at the dinner table. It's like who this woman is. Whew. Like, yeah, huh? It's absolutely wild because like they're trying to have a nice dinner. Emily's talking about returning to school, maybe going back. Syl is very supportive, like, of her returning to her teaching career. And then June just out of nowhere with who's Iris Baker? So, like, but it wasn't out of nowhere to me. This is the scene that really offended me for June. I was upset for June in this scene because you have the three people that she's probably closest with in Canada, right? Yeah. And no one at all can acknowledge her experiences. It's like, even, like, like, I almost can get it from Luke because at least he's so far removed, but... Obviously, Moira and Emily have been out for a while and they've had time to adjust, but I feel like no one's accepting the fact that June has very much not had time to adjust. And she maybe doesn't want to sit around the table talking about how everyone has plans to move forward because we know, and maybe it's unfair because it's only us that knows, that June's head is very much still in Gilead at all times. She is dealing with all of that trauma, all of those flashbacks that we get to see her have constantly. But like, she to sit there and listen to Moira talk about what she wants to do and what, you know, she's going to, she's coding and boot camp and plans and moving forward. And then you've got Emily, like Luke questions her, do you want to go back to teaching? And she's talking about how she's not ready, but Syl's kind of pushing her again. It's these people that mm. are more further removed from the situation, pushing her to get go back into teaching. And she's saying, well, I don't know if I'm ready yet. And to me, I'm like, well, is anyone going to acknowledge that there's, I just feel like for June, it feels like they're all trying to move on with their life. And she's like, what about stopping Gilead? Which I understand is an obsession for her, but it's also a valid point. And she's very much entrenched in everything that's there. And it's still on Canadian soil. She's got to testify tomorrow. Like, there's just so much happening. And for them to just be like, so Emily, are you going to go back to teaching anytime soon? That's like, it's, I don't know. I thought it wasn't very fair to June to be having that flippant conversation like that. I don't think it's a matter – like, I, I can totally see where I'm coming from with this because it – because perhaps they could be a bit more sensitive to what June's about to be going through. Um, my my inclination for how this scene went, though, was um, very similar, but, like, of course, I'm going to view it slightly uh, slightly differently because that's what you and I do. Um, I, view, I viewed it as June feeling alienated in her healing process. Yeah. Um, not necessarily because these people are being insensitive to her, but because they're trying to – they're they're at a different point of their healing process, and she's still very much in that very raw stage. And, like, with her pulling the attention back onto who Iris Baker is, and there's this awkward silence that they, uh, that they all have, and – Emily doesn't really want to talk about this and June saying you should face her and Emily saying we're not all like you I think Mm -hmm. is her way of trying to say like we're not all in the same part of our healing process Mm. and I can definitely see where you're coming from with them not being particularly fair to June about this but it's also I mean again June is a trauma victim right now she is dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder she's dealing with the stress of everything else but i i'm i just feel like maybe like when emily says we're not all like you that would have been june's opportunity to say like okay cool like i need to process this though like so and do you think maybe it's perhaps that she doesn't feel safe having that conversation around luke or around anyone at this point I think she's more insistent with Emily because I feel like her and Emily have enough shared experiences Mm -hmm. where I almost feel like she's pleading for the Emily she knows to come back. And that's what I guess is probably the biggest part of this scene is the fact that Moira's talking about going back to the career she we know she was already working on Mm pre-Gilead. Emily is being asked if she's going back to the career. Like, think about it for a second. Mm, If you're June in this moment, are you thinking about going back to editing? Like, is that even kind of a thought in your mind? So, so like, alienated, 100%, I agree with you. If nothing else, like, it may not be fair to say they're being insensitive, um, but it's certainly to June feels at least a little insensitive, certainly alienating. And I feel like it's almost her pleading because she doesn't take her eyes off Emily. It's it's creepy. It is creepy. Yeah. Um, She stares at Emily the entire time they're having like boot camp coding conversation. Like it's it's awkward from the start. She's just intensely staring at her. And then 
she starts to question her, but then June, uh, June, Luke jumps in with like outrage, and that was frustrating to me because yeah. again, I'm like, they just are so far removed from her immediate experiences, and I feel like, yeah, you're right. It's just, just that she's incredibly alienated in this scene. This to me felt like a um, like a very similar to how in the last episode where June held Luke down to get what she wanted out of him, which was at that point, like a sexual release. Um, this to me, like with that, with June staring at Emily and not releasing her gaze felt very much mentally in that same sort uh, same sort of uh, vibe of like, yeah, making the person that she's uh, directing her attention towards extremely uncomfortable with her intensity and not being, not being willing to relinquish that perhaps what she's doing might not be the best of options. Um, and my, it might be a bit, uh, a bit abrasive, a bit uncouth. Um, but that's what, it, that's sort of what it felt like to me at that moment as well, was that same sort of like violation of, of a person, of like the person who she's talking to sovereignty over themselves, if that makes sense. It does. It really does. But, um, it makes me think about the fact that, so what, if there's nothing else that Emily and June can do is that they can communicate without talking. They've had to, right? For mm -hmm. so long, they had to be able to communicate with just their looks. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that's part of it too, that alienation that she's feeling. Um, and that, like I was saying, it feels like she's pleading with her. Um, mm -hmm. And it's certainly uncomfortable. Um, mm -hmm. But what if it's because she, she doesn't even want to talk about it with Luke right there? Like you were saying, like, she asked her about it and then he quickly like, oh, June, why would you say, like, why would you ask her that? And yeah, he's so like yeah. appalled by it. And she's like, almost doesn't even have time for his question. She's like, it's aunts. It's what they do. They hurt people. I'm trying to get an answer right now. Like she's, A, Luke seemed to be annoying her. His presence yeah. seemed to be annoying her. His questions seemed to be annoying her. Um, but also I think that she was trying to communicate with Emily by staring at her because mm -hmm. they can do that without their words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um. It also like plays into I uh, plays into what we see later in the episode where June is just not willing to communicate with Luke, um, so yeah. she has these yeah. massive like f like a massive for uh, fortress around her when it comes to uh, discussing anything about Gilead with Luke, and this is this is very much a Gilead conversation that she's trying to have with Emily, yeah. and yeah. Luke's interjections feel uh, must feel like uh, a bit of an affront to her. I think this conversation would have gone differently if Luke wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. I think mm -hmm. that they would have probably spoken more plainly about this. Yeah. But at but bottom line, like, I understand June's feelings of alienation, but she's not understanding boundaries either. Yeah. Right. Emily has some boundaries right now, and Moira calls her on it because she says, what does it matter? Because Emily here doesn't want to talk about it. And it's like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Let her eat. Yeah, I, I, that's interesting because I feel like a lot of a June's experiences have probably uh, shaded boundaries. You know what I mean? We see it a lot. She, yeah. Boundaries don't really exist anywhere for her or for anyone mm -hmm. else in Gilead. So it's almost like we're seeing a lot of that play out where she's yeah. like, you know, she says it later, like, mm -hmm. apparently I need to ask your opinion or see it. You know what I mean? She kind of makes this comment like, that's how we do things now. But it's like, yeah, that is how we do things now, June. Welcome to Canada. Well, we've talked about uh, talked about it before. Conversational style in Gilead doesn't allow for long, drawn out, elaborative discussions about how we're going to go from point A to point B. You have to get from point A to point B in three sentences or less. And if you want something, you got to state it quickly because this might be your last fucking chance. So I feel like she is definitely still in. I'm in resistance fighter mode and we have to communicate mm -hmm. yeah. short, quick, and to the point mm -hmm. all the time right now. Even though I'm not in Gilead anymore, I don't necessarily have to do that. Right. She's yeah. still stuck in it. Yeah. It's all She's that trauma. She's still stuck in a war zone. She's, it's Absolutely. anxiety. And, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 